everyone, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. So if you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming at you another Let's Play episode of Changeling Tale, Grace's Path. So I had a little bit of an idea. I was thinking that maybe I could upload some fully unredacted, uh, some fully uncovered, unredacted playthroughs of this po and other games, possibly on Pornhub. <laughs> Uh, just, uh, something that I was thinking about, because I know that there's actually, oddly enough, that website has quite a booming g uh, gaming market, apparently. Uh, lots of Let's Plays and videos on there that, yeah, so, I'm gonna look into that and see what I can do, if that's the case, maybe I'll get that started on there, but anyway, guys, let me, let's jump right back into it, let me entertain you for the next 20 minutes, and here we go, <clears throat> alright. We both laugh, and Grace pulls me into an embrace. For a moment, it makes me feel as she does. For a moment, it makes me feel. It makes me feel as she does, safe, knowing that everything will be all right. I ache for that feeling to linger, but she pulls herself away. I'll see you soon, Grace. Whether you like it or not. Don't worry, Malcolm. I like it. I gather my things and leave. With my heart at once full but breaking. Mm -hmm. Damn. Don't let that girl get away from you, Malcolm. She's a keeper. Being indebted to Marion's well being, I make a detour back to her home to give her an update and return her basket. I knock lightly and let myself in. Marion is still at the table, needle and thread in hand. Looks as though she is mending the quilt. Hello, Marion? She smiles. Her eyes are glazed, and I assume she's taken to the strong tea. Oh, Malcolm, do come in. Is Grace with you? Huh, no. But she assures me she will return soon. Marion's face drops. Oh, I... You know, I'm not surprised. Please don't worry. Grace truly is alright. She just needs some time to herself. Marion sips her spiked tea and snorts. Half of her life is spent alone. How much more time could she need? take the cup from Marion's hand. She eye rolls me. I start to set it down and decide to down the rest of the tea myself. The burn in my throat confirms that the tea is long gone, replaced with straight whiskey. At least it's keeping Marion calm. You're right. She's definitely a finicky girl. Tell me, Marion. I pour another shot into the teacup. I down it before asking. My nerves and patience are rattled. This might be. This might come out the wrong way, but there's no easy way to put it. Do you think Grace feels loved? Marion's eyes stare through me. Why would you ask that, Malcolm? It's just... Well, simply put, Grace very much wants to escape her life here. I understand why Jessie left. I do. She has aspirations and wants some action in her life. But Grace, I just don't entirely see why she's running from everyone, everything. All the time, just wanting to be alone. My mind returns to the hillside yesterday. I opened up to Grace and she to me. Perhaps I understand better than I let on. But does Marion... I feel like I should be offended. I love Grace with all my heart, as I do Jesse, but... Marion's concentration appears to drift off before returning solemnly. Grace blames herself for things that we do not. I don't know how she sees the world. I only know what I witness. She is isolated to the point of sadness. Beyond some witty remarks, I, to this day, don't know how to make her smile. Grace thinks she... How do I say it? She mentioned your mother. Yes, she thinks it is her burden to bear. It's not. It never was. Have you told her that? Probably not often enough. She and Jessie have always been closer. I know Jessie has tried to assure her she is wanted. Loved. I'm just... well... I say I'm too busy, but truly I'm too scared. Talking to her is a challenge. I never know where the conversation will go. Never know if she's truly listening. I'm, I'm sorry, I don't know if I'm making sense. I've enjoyed the whiskey a bit, quite a bit this afternoon. I realize this must be draining for Marion, having to discuss personal matters with a relative stranger. We may be neighbors and friends, but she and I are hardly confidants. I just want Grace and you to be happy. I wish that all for all of my friends and family. Right now, Grace is a bit traumatized, most likely from Jesse leaving. And a fin the size of a dolphin, I think to myself. She'll come around. I only hope she seeks the comfort of home instead of solitude. I... I've only been trying to keep the family together in Father's absence. Oh, how I failed miserably. 
high and dry. But you haven't. Your sisters are grown, independent. You've done not a thing wrong. In fact, you've done a lot of things right, seeing as they are confident and self-assured. To a fault, I would say. Some good has done me. I've not half an ounce of the confidence that they have. I like this music. Ah, oh, it's so nice. It wasn't... <clears throat> Malcolm, what's happened to your voice? It wasn't my intention to spend my, to summon my time here assuring Marion of her worth as well. But here I am, ever the good soldier, keeping the brigade in high spirits. Your confidence is your pride, your wisdom, your caring nature. Your strength is your resilience. Fret not, Marion. Confidence doesn't come from wanting something else, or wanting to be somewhere else. It comes from being comfortable with yourself no matter where you are. <laughs> where did that come from? I surprised myself, and wonder if it's something my grandfather told me years back. I stop and think, and realize if I'm, realize if I'm speaking the truth, then I am a lot more confident than I ever would have guessed. I hope that's true, Malcolm. I do. And I appreciate you stopping by. I think I need to do something I never do. I'm prepared for her to say she's headed to the pub for a pint, or off to the mercantile in Strathcairn for a hand curled cigar. I'm going to take a nap. Oh. Ah, well, today is a good day as ever to introduce new habits, I'd say. I stand to leave, but not before giving Marion a warm embrace. One she readily accepts. Rest well, Marion. With any luck, Grace will be home will be homebound soon. Aye, but will she though? Will the last be coming back to her to her homestead? Back home, I can't help but collapse onto the bed. Gran has left a note. Vulgaire picked her up at noon to join the Wist Club members whilst they purchased whilst they purchased new quilting supplies. I take the respite to reflect on the day's events. <laughs> What's there to do? What can I do? Summoning the doctor from Strathcairn is the first thing that surprised that springs to mind. But knowing Grace, she swims to the Orkneys to avoid a proper a proper checkup now. And in this village, having the doctor visit having the doctor visit invites the rumor mill the rumor mill to start turning. I can hear the hushed whispers of marrows and mermaids now, as if Grace didn't feel like an outcast already. With every scenario I play out in my head, I keep coming back to the same conclusion. The situation is out of my hands. Grace will do what Grace will do. We'll just have to take faith in her optimism, and everything will turn out fine. Even if right now it all seems to be spiraling out of control. Hmm. Oh, what's gonna happen? What's gonna happen? Oh yeah, you're gonna bang messy. We all know what's gonna happen. At some point in between daydreaming about Grace, her kisses, and the new changing body, I must fall asleep as I wake to Gran rustling me awake. Malcolm, I'm headed to bed. Are you all right? Gran, <laughs> did you wake me up to tell me it's bedtime? <laughs> oh dear, I suppose I did. Don't mind me. Had a bit too much of a rub in his home-brewed cider. Your gran's quite sleepy. You should see the fabrics the girls picked out. The Christmas quilts will be stunning this winter. Say, how is Marion? Did she find her poor cows? I'm shouted by the question, barely remembering Marion's tale of woe from earlier in the day. I make something up in haste. Yes, yes, we are found them quickly enough. I um, stayed to help milk them. Such a good boy, Malcolm. I'm sure you have put her mind at ease. Now, off to dreamland for this old dame. <laughs> oh, man. Oh. 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 Mm, sorry about that. We hug goodnight, and I fall back into my own world of dreams. My sleep is interrupted constantly, with vivid images of rolling seas, swimming through murky depths, graced by my side. The deeper we go, the worse everything gets. The lengths of seaweed blind us, the mackerel bare their sharp teeth, the water is cold as ice. Well, yes, that is called the open ocean. As we travel, Grace pulls me down with her until I can't breathe. She tells me to inhale, to, en to enjoy. I can't, or I won't. All I know is that every moment, every toss of the tide is choking me. Oh, man. You have to reconcile. Jump into the sea with your girl. And as the sun rises, so too does a new day begin. With fresh experiences in tow. Another night of restless sleep, on the market day morning, it has taken nearly the whole ride into town just to shake the tightness in my throat, left over from last night's dream. I check the list Grant left for me, remembering Grace's monstrous appetite. I've scribbled 21 pounds of perch at the end, too. Must visit the fishmonger first before Bulgaria makes off with all the best catch. Ooh. 
fishies. A fishmonger is away chatting to the cheesemonger. A small crowd of ki a small crowd of kidnucks around them. Must be some juicy gossip, judging from their excitement and hushed tones. If Fran were here, I have no doubt she'd sidle right over to the cheese stand and eavesdrop. Preferring to maintain my dignity, I instead look over this morning's catch for a good specimen. Uh, that one looks good. Hmm. Oh, oh, look who it is. Malcolm, how are you? A familiar face appears behind the stand. She helps both the Milner and the fishmonger. She helps both the Milner and the fishmonger. This lass gets around. She seems pleased to see me, so I return her kindness and favor. I'm well, yourself. You're working with the fishermen now, too? I'm sorry, let me rephrase that into a damn question. You're working with the fishermen now, too? She dons a signature blush. I, um, I help out here and there. <laughs> I understand. Much work these days, and never enough hands to go around. That's a fact. Despite our conversation outside church the other day, she seems back to her usual shy self. I'm not sure what to say. So, uh, things are going well in Effie's world. I'd say so. I mean, the days kind of blend, but that's normal. I would even say I feel more myself, more alive. <laughs> Odd. Grace said the same thing. I look from Effie, down to the fish, then up again. No, this is a coincidence. It must be. I've been keeping active, staying social. Something like that. I've taken to wandering the water's edge lately. I do love the way the sun glitters off the lock in spring. Ha! You and me both. Grace as well. I remind myself of another place to be. Say, I'll save your hands from having to wrangle these slippery suckers and slide a few perch into my own bucket. All right, then? Of course. Help yourself. Hmm, Gran has a tab. Please add two pounds worth to the till. Hmm. <laughs> Her eyes are so brilliant. Oh, no. It catches the fishmonger's ear. He shuffles over and nods. Will do, Malcolm. Tell your Gran I offer a hello. I can't help but do a double take. The fisherman I remember before the war was a strapping, clean-shaven young lad. Now he sports a bushy bear that'd give Murdoch a run for his money. In fact, could they be related? Kitty! Before I can ask, all three of us are startled by a wary cat hopping up onto the stand. It gives me a curious look and absconds with a herring before any of us can react. Come back here! Come back here with that lousy Grimlock Grimlockin! <laughs> Feisty, eh? She's very cute. Hmm, and fast, too. I watched the fishmonger chase the cat through the crowd, though I doubt he would be able to bring it to justice. I suppose the animal kingdom abides by its own rules. Well, I'd better finish up shop finish shopping and get back to before the fish spoils. Naturally. Take good care, Malcolm. See you around. You too. I wonder who she is. I hold my bucket to the market, stopping to collect some flour and a new scarf for Gran. I've stooped down to inspect the mixed crate of second-hand tools when a shadow overtakes me. Hello, Malcolm. <clears throat> oh my, a steely voice. I look up and Alana's face is plain as day, covering the sun overhead. Anana, what a lovely surprise. I stand and offer my hand. When she doesn't take it, I look down and notice how grimy it is. Ah, my apologies. I suppose I've had a quite a busy day at the market. It must smell dreadful. You smell fine, Malcolm. I, I don't mean to interrupt. Her tone is flat, caustic even. Don't you? She's taken aback, though I don't regret saying it. I'm actually pleased that Grant's attitude is rubbing off on me. Well, I suppose I do. You do remember that... She holds her arms tightly, shivering. I would offer her warmth, but I've no coat, and she really ought not to be on... Not to be cold on such a warm, sunny day. She continues, a bit stilted. I warned you to stay away from the cloud girls. I wipe sweat from my brow. The accusation is unexpected and unwelcome. That's not something easily forgotten, Miss Alana. I didn't think it needed further discussion. I told you, thinking you would listen. You're always a wise young man. My visits with the sisters have hardly been public. Why would she doubt me? Why does she insist on holding me to such a ridiculous requirement in the first place? Bile rises in my throat. Not listening to you is not a lack of wisdom, I assure you. It's merely following my head and heart over over the delusions of someone I trust, don't, someone I don't trust. Alana gasps. My words are heat for the moment, or heat of the moment, but honest. Her face drops. I know I've offended her deeply. Her eyes fill with tears, but she fights them back. I would apologize, but I sincerely don't feel the need. If I continue to be accosted by a batty school marm, I will continue to respond in kind. Malcolm. 
And I'm going to speak and you'll never hear from me again. Alright. I start to protest but stop myself. To be fair, I don't mind seeing her. I simply mind, simply mind her bizarre commands. Please do, Miss Alana. Are you finally going to tell me what's going on? I set down the pail and cross my arms, parroting her. She's forthright with her speech to me. What Grace has become is becoming. It's what I feared deeply. You, your presence has triggered something in her, something rooted within. I was expecting more nonsense, not this. How do you know about Grace? Have you been following me? No, Malcolm, dear. It's all over town. The fisherman spied a mermaid, they say. Most don't believe him, as you didn't believe me. But if things continue, they will. You will. My face goes red, so that was, the, so that was what the excitement of the cheese stand was all about. What is that supposed to mean? Are you saying it's true? Her new appearance, her abilities, her lustful nature. These are things that are happening because of you, and the changes will only get worse if you continue to see her. I fume. Grace's affliction, whatever it is, is a serious condition. And you'd have the gall to accuse me of causing it. I'm trying to help her. The outburst turns a few market goers' heads, and I force myself to calm down, lest we draw more attention. <clears throat> Sorry, almost choked on my own tongue there. Anna's face softens. Her cheeks go flush as she speaks. I know, Malcolm, and so am I. I never meant to be oblique or burdensome. I care very much for Grace and her sisters. I hurt my heart deeply when they lost their mother, and I've tried for years to care for them in some fashion similar to my family. It seems as though she is letting down a large wall, and I'm experiencing her as a whole person for the first time. I want to be sympathetic, but I'm not there yet. The girls are, in some small way, my girls too. Grace is quite different from other children. Grace's condition will not improve. To lure out a siren. Hmm. Finally, I find my voice and speak up again. I don't believe she wants it to. I know, and neither of you understand what that entails. No, we don't. But it isn't hurting her, so far. But it will, Malcolm. Over time, it will. Tell me what's happening, then. Abidden visions from the nightmare worm their way into my thoughts. I jump to the wildest conclusions. Will she lose her mind? Become a, a what? A mermaid? Completely? No. Grace will always be Grace. But there's much more to Grace than meets the eye. These changes will continue, past a point of no return. Alana clasps her hands together, holding them to her face. Malcolm, no matter how much she sees this as a gift, she needs to know that life is not going to just be simplicity and luxury. She's at risk for many things. She could be found or harmed, perhaps both. My frustration is increasing again, and tightness in my chest tells me this conversation needs to end. Why aren't you telling her? Have you already? Not yet. I can't find her. The sea is vast, as you know, but... She nods to the fish in my pail. I think you already have. I... will... Ugh. How long have you known all this? Or should I be asking her when she concocted this tall tale? You never warned her family this could happen. Her grace is a child. Would they have believed me if I had? Anyway, she was never at risk, at least not until you returned. It seems the discussions come back around to accusations. I've had enough. Don't, don't talk mince, Alana. I can't listen to your flights of fancy anymore. Please, allow me to be on my way. Instead of, con instead of conceding, Alana talks faster. I pick up the flower in the pail and start walking away, trying to drown out her shouts. Malcolm, you are the reason this is happening to her. You've unlocked something in her that another could not. It's your attraction to her that allows her to become more of her true nature. Please, listen! Heads are turning again. It says to stop, lest our exchange replace the mermaid citing a scandal of the week. I pause long enough to humor Alana and hiss. All right, let me get this straight. I am unwillingly turning a young woman into a sea maiden. Do you hear those words? How irrational you sound. Aye, absolutely. That's why I avoided saying anything for so long. Who would you, who would believe me? But Malcolm, you don't have to believe me for it to be true. Those words catch me off guard. Grace is losing parts of herself and gaining others, ones that she can no longer control. If you believe me even a little bit, I urge you to find her, warn her, tell her that no good will come from the two of you staying intimate. I consider what she's saying, wondering how Alana can be both so unsettlingly prescient and preposterous at the same time. 
If any of what she says is true, I may have ruined Grace's life, or it made it infinitely better. Or both, somehow. But it's not true. It can't be. Her explanation for Grace's predicament is ludicrous. Alana, enough is enough. I'm off to find Grace. Can you speak to her about this? Please! I don't believe I've ever had more women plead with me as I've had over the past few days. I'm flattered and annoyed, frustrated beyond belief. Perhaps. She'll come to find you, I know. You need to tell her, or... Alana pauses to take my hand. Her beloved fingers clasp onto mine as she runs her thumb along my palm. It sends a shiver through me. Or you need to walk away. The sun's just behind Alana, and I'm blinded. She leads me behind the stag and Annie, away from the glare. With her hands still in mine, I feel like a child being guided by my teacher once more. Do I trust her now? What do I believe? I mean, maybe this... I mean, yeah, maybe there's some truth in what she says. Hey guys, I'm gonna save it right here. Thank you all so much for watching. This has been another episode of Changeling Tale, Grace's Path. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring the notification bell. Please tell me how you feel about my little proposition at the, be at the beginning of the episode. But anyway, guys, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!